Okay, thanks, Peter. So today's talk is um, joint work that I've been doing with Joe Clark and Peter Cox at Exeter and Chris Huntingford from CEH. And it sort of can be summarised by this um, animation of the cartoon Roadrunner that you're seeing here. Um, so here we've got Coyote on the edge of a cliff and then he gets surprised from behind, which takes him beyond the cliff edge. Um, and then there's this comedic moment where he doesn't realise where he is. And then once he eventually realises, he then starts falling um, down to the bottom of the valley. And so what we want to do when we consider uh, systems overshooting tipping point thresholds is, can we avoid the fate that happens to Coyote and instead reverse the forcing sufficiently fast so that we can retain our original state of the system without tipping? So on the left here, I've got an animation of what many of us would consider the classical tipping scenario. And that is we have a critical threshold in some forcing parameter. So for this talk, I'm going to assume it's global warming. And then once um, the system passes this critical threshold, it observes, we, we observe an instantaneous abrupt transition to an alternative state. Now we can view this um, sort of tipping in the stability landscape where the wells of the landscape represent the stable states of the system and the ball represents the current state the system resides in. And so as you're approaching this critical threshold, our current uh, well starts to shallow and deform and at the critical threshold it eventually vanishes, causing the ball to transition to the um, left-hand well. However, if the time scale of the system is a lot slower, we get different behaviour. So on the right here, we've got exactly the same setup as before. So we've got the same uh, steady states for the system. We've got the same critical threshold at two degrees warming. And we've also got the same rate of um, increase in the warming as well. The only thing here we've changed is the time scale of the system to make it much slower. And so what you observe here now when you cross this critical threshold is you don't see an instantaneous abrupt transition. Instead, you observe a delay. And here the tip, tipping isn't really taking place until about two and a half degrees uh, warming compared to the two degree critical threshold. So it's this delay that we observe in uh, so-called slow onset tipping elements that we look to try and exploit by reversing the forcing sufficiently fast that we can get it back to our upper stable branch and avoid the tipping. So we're now gonna take um, the slow onset tipping um, system and force it with global warming overshoots as given in the top right here. Um, and so these are take the form from the Huntingford et al 2017 paper where we will assign global warming to be at the current level of roughly one degree and then it we assume warming will increase to beyond some uh, tipping point threshold to a peak global warming before re reversing the force and back down to um, below the threshold and stabilise at the one and a half degree level corresponding to the Paris climate targets. Um, so on the left, I've now got um, what happens if we take the green overshoot um, trajectory. And here you can see that again, as we cross the tipping point threshold, we don't get this instantaneous uh, tipping, but now by reversing the forcing, we're able to get our system back to our original stable state. So in the stability landscape, what is happening is as the ball is starting to move towards the left-hand well, as we reverse the force in, our right-hand well is starting to reform again, and it reforms just in time to catch the ball before it runs away to the alternative well. Now on the right here, if we just now look at the purple trajectory, the only thing really different here is we're just overshooting the threshold a little bit further, and now this extra overshoot means that the reversal in the forcing isn't sufficiently fast to prevent the system from tipping to its alternative state. And so again, in the stability landscape, the ball is, has already run away to the left-hand well before the right-hand well um, reforms uh, to catch the ball. So on the left-hand side is, a, is an example of what we would call a safe overshoot of a tipping point threshold where we don't see tipping. And on the right hand side is an example of an unsafe overshoot because we experienced tipping. So we're now going to look at this for four very simple um, models of tipping elements in the climate system. 
So in 2008, uh, Tim Lenton um, identified various elements of the climate system that could undergo tipping. Um, and then 10 years later, Will Stefan et al um, updated this figure um, to assign temperature ranges at which some of these elements could be triggered into tipping. And so in these models, we can prescribe where the um, critical threshold is. And so we're just going to simply take the midpoint of these um, ranges presented by the Stefan et al paper. So I'll just um, quickly go over one of these models. Um, so here we've got model for the AMOC. So this is the circulation current um, in the Atlantic Ocean. And we're going to consider two different uh, global warming overshoot trajectories given by the top left panel. The bottom left panel shows the AMOC response by measuring the flow strength. And then on the right hand side, we've got the bifurcation diagram with the flow strength against global warming. So up to the critical threshold of four degrees, you'll notice we've got bistable region where we've got an AMOC on state and an AMOC off state, but beyond the four degrees, only the AMOC off state persists. So if we look at the orange trajectory here, here we've got a relatively large overshoot of the tipping point threshold, but we reverse the forcing uh, relatively fast back down to the one and a half degrees level. And this is um, sufficient to retain um, the AMOC on state, despite an initial weakening in the flow strength. Now, counterintuitively, um, if we look at this blue trajectory, where we have a smaller overshoot of the threshold, but in this instance, we take much longer to um, return down to our one and a half degree level. And this slower return means that we end up tipping the AMOC um, to its collapsed state. Um, so myself and Jan Sieber um, last year developed an inverse square law relationship um, linking how far we can overshoot a tipping point threshold and the time we spend over the threshold to observable quantities of the system, namely the effective time scale of the system. Now this was done for very idealized overshoot scenarios, namely like a parabolic and symmetric um, overshoot. Now what we want to do is see how well this theory um, compares to our more realistic overshoot scenarios that we consider. So on the left, I've got um, the critical boundaries, which separate safe overshoots on the left-hand side to unsafe overshoots on the right-hand side for our four different tipping elements. And so to note here that um, on the left-hand side of this figure is our typically faster tipping element, so forest dieback in the monsoon. And these particular elements you can possibly overshoot for a matter of years or even decades, but slow uh, tipping elements such as the ice sheets and the AMOP, you can overshoot for a lot, a lot longer um, on the scale of maybe centuries or even millennia. Now, non-dimensionalizing both the magnitude of the overshoot and the time we spend beyond the threshold um, by the effective time scale of the system collapses all this on collapses this all onto one curve. Um, and so now you can see we've got really good agreement between the theory and our four tipping elements. Um, so this uh, left hand plot is sort of like a summary plot where we can compare all four tipping elements um, on the same axis. So on the y-axis, we've got the time to convergence at the one and a half degree level. And on the x-axis, we've got the peak global warming. And I've highlighted this uh, gray region to denote what we call the safe zone. Um, so this means that none of the tipping elements um, we look at actually tip if we're inside this region. Um, and what you can see from this figure is, loosely speaking, um, fast tipping elements tend to constrain how um, what our peak global warming can be, whereas the slower tipping elements tend to constrain um, how long we take to converge at our stabilization level. And then on the right hand side here, I've got um, just selected two different um, overshoot scenarios um, and then looked at their response um, for looked at the responses of the ice sheet model and the vegetation fraction 
And so if we look at this solid and circle line, we've got relatively small um, peak global warming, but a slow uh, return to our stabilization level. And this slow return um, means that we see tipping in the um, ice sheets, but we see little change in the vegetation fraction simply because we haven't crossed the tipping point threshold. Um, whereas if we look at the dotted and crossed line, we have a much higher peak global warming, but also a faster reversal um, to the one and a half degree line. And then we get the opposite um, behavior, namely that we retain the ice sheet because we've got a fast reversal on the forcing, but we see tipping in the vegetation fraction um, because of the fo forest dieback being a fast tipping element. So to summarize, I would like to hope that I've highlighted the importance of timescales for when we consider overshooting uh, tipping point thresholds. And then in particular, slow tipping um, elements can permit uh, temporary overshoots uh, of a tipping point threshold without triggering the actual tipping. Um, and then it's important to note that both the approach rate to any tipping point threshold, as well as the actions taken to reverse warming once over that threshold, Will determine if climate remains safe from unwelcome state changes. Um, so just to highlight this work is currently under re review in nature and thank you for your attention. <laughs>